guys, and welcome back to PaleoTube. And today I'm going to be talking about how fossils form and the main things which affect these processes. It's going to be a very basic guide as, as this topic is far too big to cover in one short video. However, I plan to talk about some of the topics in later videos in more detail. Here is a basic guide to fossilization. An animal dies, in this case an ammonite, and sinks to the sea floor. Sediment falls and covers up the fossil. This layer eventually hardens into solid rock. The fossil is compressed and its original skeleton is mineralized. Over more time, more rock layers build up over the original layer. Over millions of years, the rocks are then uplifted so that they are above sea level. Eventually, the rocks are then eroded by rain, wind, etc. to the point where the ammonite may become exposed at or near the surface for a lucky person to find, take home and perhaps study. Becoming a fossil is a difficult process. When an organism dies it is often consumed by scavengers and broken down by decaying microbes. Therefore the most important part of the fossilization process is to prevent the decay of the animal. This mainly occurs by the creature being quickly covered by sediment or somehow falling into anoxic conditions where oxygen is not present for decaying microbes to carry out their processes. A fossil therefore has much more of a chance of being preserved in certain environments than in others, and by far the best of these is the ocean. The vast majority of known fossils are from marine conditions. Even on land water is very important. Most preserved land and animals in the fossil record are from environments where there is suspected to be a large water source such as a river, a lake, or perhaps near the coast. Only a very small percentage of fossils come from terrestrial conditions where a large water source was not likely present. The main reason for this is that there is a much higher rate of sedimentation in aquatic conditions, particularly in the oceans. If you compare this with an animal that dies on a mountain top, for example, the chances of it getting buried or otherwise protected is extremely low. Similarly, places like woods or jungles are also very bad not because of evil tigers or hypnotizing pythons, but because of the sheer amount of scavengers and decaying organisms that typically live in these environments. There is also a huge bias as to which organisms appear in the fossil record. As we've already seen, it massively dependent, depends on the environment in which the creature inhabits. However, it also depends hugely on the body shape of the animal itself. Take these four very well-known animals that are commonly found in the fossil record, for example, and ask what they all have in common. We have here an ammonite, a trilobite, a limestone comprised entirely of brachiopods, and a bivalve mollusk. All of these groups have been, and in some cases still are, massively successful. Uh, the shortest time span that any of them was around for was the trilobites which dominated the oceans for 270 million years. And then you can even go to the bivalve and the brachiopods, and these groups are, are the firstly first appear in a fossil record over 500 million years ago and are still around today. If you hadn't already figured out the answer to my earlier question, the answer is that they all have hard outer shells, which are great for helping you become a fossil. This is because the shells are very strong and don't easily get broken up during the common taphonomic processes, such as transport and decay and provide a hard part to create a cast or a mould. Contrast this, if you will, to the humble flatworm. This group is suspected to have appeared at least 550 million years ago. However, the earliest known fossil record is only 14 million years old found preserved in amber, which is fossilised tree sap. We know these guys were massively abundant, but because they're all soft body, they don't preserve especially well, and so the record of direct fossils is extremely poor. In fact, we're restricted to things like cases of parasitism, like in this ammonite, where it's suspected that the ammonite grew its skeleton around the tubes caused by parasitic flatworms. Soft bodies animals often have very poor fossil records, and in many cases are only found well preserved in very special circumstances, such as in amber, or at very special sites called Lagerstatten, which are rare places where fossils are exceptionally preserved, such as the Burgess Shale in Canada. 
Once again, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully there'll be a new episode out soon. From me, Dolly Dinner.